This is really like a DIY Zeus command and control for fun and no profit. Uh, and I say that because I'm encouraging you in your malware aquarium to recreate or rebuild or whatever term you want to use what I'm doing today, but do not do it for the wrong reasons. Do it for educational reasons, understanding traffic patterns, and when you do have Zeus in your environment, how to detect it. And I've, had, I've given this talk a few times already. I've already had people come up and go, you know, two weeks after I saw your talk, someone I know got infected with Zeus, and because of you, I had better insight into what was going on. That's why I'm doing this. Any one of you in here can reperform what I'm doing if you choose to. But most of you probably have never heard of me before. Raise your hand if you've heard of me before other than related to apps at Cali. Exactly, the blank stares I was expecting. Thank you. Um, anyone else wearing Google Glass besides that guy? Because I haven't seen anyone else. I'm really kind of disappointed. No? Okay, we're well, moving on. The NSA is watching him. The NSA, okay. Or at least watching him, and maybe INS is waiting to take him out for, you know, before him, maybe. Like the guy in the movie. Right. Appreciate your participation, sir. So that's my name. <laughs> This is who I work for. This is who I am not. <laughs> <laughs> I've had people come up to me before and, and think I am James Gandolfini, and uh, I found this picture purposely for that, and I've even had somebody tell me that they heard I died, but I look good. <laughs> so, to them. So, um, this is my entourage. They unfortunately couldn't make it. They are back at home enjoying the uh, polar vortex, whatever the hell that is. And next it's going to be called L something or other. You'll get, I'll get there. No spoilers. Uh, so as one of my former coworkers put it, guess which kid is having the most fun? The one on the far right. We can't forget the little hacker baby. Um, aside from being so cute and slightly demented looking, what do you think would be going through this hacker baby's mind? Just call it out. You're probably going to be wrong anyway. All right. What? Wait, we have one? No? You chickened out? All right. Change me. That's the typical, most common one most people say. It's no. It's buy my daddy's book. <laughs> this, book is, <laughs> this book is called Computers for Kids. This is the only like, you know, plug I'm going to give for it. Uh, something in, something out. And the reason why we created it, uh, the, my oldest child who was now eight, when he was five, wanted to learn more about technology. We could not find anything that was more technical at, like for a five-year-old. Everything was learn HTML and how to send email and save internet practices, and it was all too advanced for him. Nothing in the library, nothing in the stores. So I said, why don't we just create one? So I um, totally exploited my kids. They're in the book. They didn't get paid anything, but I give them free room and board and lots of love. <laughs> but so they... Um, any, any proceeds from this is just going to go back to creating more books in the series. So you can get it on Amazon or lulu.com. That is L-U-L-U.com. So um, this is where I originally went to school, as in the borough of Queens, not um, parts of the UK. Yes, I have to distinguish that because somebody once got confused. So you can kind of tell where my accent came from. I uh, thought I'd become one of these. So I originally went to Queens College to become this, and I decided I don't want that. I got this instead. Look familiar to anybody? Yeah. Usually the older people in the room raise their hands. <laughs> and then I got the upgrade exam, and then I heard of this place. This, this. If you're going to keep doing that, I'm going to start picking on you, dude. I love you. You're awesome. But let me let me get through the rolling. It's killing my rhythm. So I heard of CompTIA. So I got a couple of the other exams, then did this one. So you probably have heard of this one. And then there's the CISA and all the others. No, I did not do them yet. I kind of stopped at this one. But all of my success and the ability to pass these tests, I owe to this. Mass quantities. Any other addicts in the room? Come on. Really? That's it? You guys write code and do security and you don't drink. So what do you drink? Red Bull or some other shit? Drugs? Cocaine? <laughs> Okay, so um, when I'm not drinking coffee, and it's right there next to me to keep me company, I do this as a hobby to kind of get away from technology, so I do competitive Taekwondo. I also um, 
used to blog for these folks. Now I blog for Barracuda Labs. And I also started this group in Chicago. And um, I'm hopefully getting somebody from like OWASP Zap, like evangelist to speak at these because I thought that talk earlier was pretty good. So uh, this is where I live. So there's your spoiler, the answer to your question. This is Chicago if you don't recognize the landmarks. As I mentioned before, I'm originally from here. This is New York there. Well, they got a new building now, but I was gonna say their last tall standing building, but when I got this, that's when they, uh, before they finished the other World Trade Center. And to be clear, I am no way in any shape or form a fan of them. <laughs> you from New York? Uh, come on, be honest. We won't beat you up. Bean Town. All right. Well, then Bean Town. You should hate these guys. I should. It's a long story. We'll save it for the reception. But we appreciate your contribution. Um, so let's get into this shit. Oh, and if I my profanity offends you, there's the door. So we're here to talk about some malware, and we're going to talk about a specific kind of malware that's called a Trojan. I'm assuming you all know what a Trojan is. If you don't, please raise your hand, and I'll explain it. Thank you. And this Trojan's name is Zeus, which we already spoke about, and it was called Zeus because it was supposed to be the god of all the different bots. And when you have Zeus installed on your machine, that bot becomes a part of a botnet. A little exciting terminology I'm dropping here. But when you are a um, operator or administrator of the botnet, you are called a bot herder. <laughs> Some bot herders have other interesting nicknames, like the happy hacker. You ever guys hear, you heard about this guy? No, that's why I'm going to tell you about him. This is who I don't want you to have as a role model. This guy here, the happy hacker, was a bot master of what I've read, hundreds of thousands of bots. So he was very successful at doing this. And when you're really good at doing something that's illegal, this happens to you. Um, as you can see, he's still smiling. That's why they call him the happy hacker. But look at the two gentlemen that are next to him. He was in Thailand. This is from Bangkok Times. Oh, uh, got cut off. Um, and that's the land of smile, but they don't like it when you're breaking laws in their country, so they incarcerate you quickly. Uh, so that's my message. My message is go forth and prosper, learn, become smarter, and then put this stuff in your network, but do not do it for illegal gain. You will be caught. His real name is Hamza Bendelaj. He's an Armenian gentleman who um, we still don't know where he is anymore because somehow he got out and escaped. Good for him until he's caught again. And they are watching, aside from the NSA, there is uh, ZeusTracker.abuse.ch. So this is something if you want to go and learn more about what's happening out there or you want to try to get your hands on some Zeus code, this is a place to do it. So this demo today, I'm just going to set the stage also. I, I like to let people know right off the bat. I'm not giving you any of the code. I'll give you the script to install it that I put together myself. Bash script, it's very simple. I'm sure you guys can do it. But I don't hand out the code, so please don't ask me. You gotta dig for it on your own, because if I give it to you, I don't know your ethics, and if you start doing something illicit, I'm gonna have to come after you. Yes, sir? How about the deck? That can be available? That should be available. In fact, it's on Prezi, and if you just search my name in Zeus or DIY, it's totally available. I made this one public, but I've done this talk so many other times, there was multiple copies, so sorry for the redundancy. But here, when I took the snapshot back in September of last year, there was a little over 900 or so um, sites that were either compromised or they were command and control or they were delivering out the bot or they had like a bin file or something which is a configuration file to tell the bot what to do or now you're not reporting into this control center but you're going to report in over here because we shut down shop here and moved over there. I checked last night it's down to 523 unless it's changed some other time today but if you go there now and you go into monitor.php you'll be able to see how many known um, Zeus related CNC's are there. But the code was made available because the gentleman who put Zeus together originally retired a couple of years ago and made the code, the source code, available. So there's all these spinoffs. So you'll see things up there like Ice9 and Citadel, and there's some other variants. And there's even one for Android called Zipmo, Zeus in the mobile. It's pretty interesting. Yeah, I know, creative names. So that is that. And remember, and if you do decide to do anything bad, Think of Hamza. 
So let's talk a little bit more about Zeus now that we set that stage. What I like a lot about Zeus is um, the powerful scripting engine that comes with it without needing to know complex script. So let's zoom into this a little closer. So when you look at the top, um, I'm not going to go through all these. I'm just going to point out the ones that are most interesting because some of them are pretty redundant. Um, like one thing is to unblock a URL, one is to block a URL. It doesn't take much to figure that one out. What I think is interesting about is uh, getting the certificate store and grabbing certificates. So if there's anything that might be on that machine that is using certificate-based authentication, now the bot herder has a copy and then they can go and do some other techniques to get onto your machine. One of them we're going to try later. They can even grab your cookies. So if they see that you're online and that you're active, grab your cookies decoder, maybe jump your session. Uh, user executes pretty interesting because then you can use something like a Google Drive to deliver software, maybe like a keystroke logger, to your target and it will just install silently. And once you've done that, if you need to either log the user off to restart their session or their token or do a reboot, Zeus makes that available to you. So it's very common knowledge that Zeus is just stealing banking information, but it's a lot more powerful, which is why I gave this talk to kind of share that knowledge with folks. This um, bot BC ad, BC stands for back connect. So Zeus can have a connection open from the client, connect to a server, which could be then used from another host to then traverse back onto that client. I'm gonna do that as a live demo. It'll do it either as RDP, SOX, or VNC. So we're gonna do RDP today. Um, then there's a shutdown, in case you need to turn the machine off when you're done doing your crime. User destroy. So these are the Windows 7 commands. Uh, there's a lot of older versions of Zeus, like 1.x, this is the 2.09 version, that have um, commands specific for XP because of its security model. And in fact, then it was, it was like OS kill, and it would just literally wipe the machine out. And yeah, it, it, it's messed up, but when you think about it and you boot up, if you're a regular user and your system boots up and you just get that black screen that says there's a missing file, what is the first thing most regular users think about? Shout it out. Yeah, exactly. No, they're thinking about their photos, photos of their kids or special events. They're thinking about their banking information, their tax information, things that are on that drive that they might not have backed up and now are not accessible. And it was kind of really cool that the engineer who, who put Zeus together thought of doing that because it's a little social engineering. The reason why is once that machine is down, you're thinking about, I got to call this guy to recover my system and he needs to do it right away. You're not thinking about your bank account, which is already you know, all that credit card information, all your authentication information has already been siphoned. So when Zeus talks about, well, they steal banking information, but then they do these other dirty deeds behind the scenes if they want to, which changes your mind from, oh, let me go check my bank account to, I have a bigger emergency. And then when you look at your bank account, it's gone. So pretty clever. So we're going to do user destroy, and hopefully that'll work. Oh, I can almost always guarantee, I forgot to make a second sacrifice to the demo gods. I made one earlier. I did it in hex. Anybody decode it on Twitter? No? I just said, um, Zeus must die. Wow, I try to make things fun for you guys, and you're all just here busy absorbing knowledge. How boring. Uh, and then, the oh, the HP inject. That's the one where it's, um, you can have somebody go to a page and actually inject like a row into the HTML and ask for additional information that maybe their bank is not asking for. So I got that one too, that one's a fun one. And that was all working earlier. I tested it last night, I tested it earlier today. It all looked pretty good. So if it doesn't work, you gotta keep sacrificing to those demo gods. Can't emphasize it enough. Oh, and if you want, you want me to go back one so you can take a picture? Oh, yeah. All right. That would be awesome. I'm very generous to my audience. I'm a constant giver. I got to get my wife to watch this. All right, you got that? Good. So I'm on Twitter. Uh, feel free. I'm actually very interactive on Twitter, too. So if you follow me and you tweet something to me, unless it's just something really asinine and I have no reason to respond, I will respond to you. So, um, you know, feel free. And also, thank you, Barracuda. We're not done yet, but I just wanted to put that up there because I don't really plan to come back to Prezi. So let's do this demo. 
Oh crap, I forgot to fire up the VM. So while the VM fires up, I'll take a quick question or two. What is the latest version of Swift now? There is no more, they stopped development, they're forks. Ice9 and Citadel are the forks. Almost there. So once Cali starts, and I actually tried this out on, um, I, I did it on Backtrack so many times, and then I had somebody blurt out, why do you use Cali? So all right, I went to Cali, and it was uh, 1.01, and it worked great, and then 5 came out, or .05. So I did that, and then it completely broke the install, so I went back. I don't know, there's something different in there. So while we do that part, I will let this fire up because just Windows takes forever to start even in a VM. Oh crap, it killed my mouse. No, give me the mouse back. I'll take another question while we wait for the mouse to come back. It always happens with the demo. I heard good stuff about Pentu. With what? Pentu as, a, as another OS for you. Oh, okay. I try to keep life simple. Um, yeah, pen to, it's not, man, it ain't working out. I'm, we're in technology, right? Oh, we got the rainbow wheel of patience. Oh, there it goes, good, it's back. I think this is fine. So, um, the platform that Zeus is on, it's LAMP based. So I actually just use like XAMP or XAMP, however you want to pronounce it. So it's all that, those components that are in there. Um, this environment, I set it up a little differently because I've done this so many different times and, and it was just a matter of like, not if it's gonna fail, but when. And I got really tired of it. it. It was actually pretty embarrassing. It was like worse than just waiting for VMware one time. It was like reverting snapshots and stuff. So I decided to put Zeus in the cloud. <laughs> <laughs> it's a SaaS, I'm renting it out. No, it's uh, so I, I have a, a server back in my lab and then I just, it's regular Ubuntu, it's nice and safe and friendly. And I put it on there and uh, Zeus is there. It's publicly available, zdemo.moo30s.com. And you can go in there and log in with an account called Guest Criminal. Password is Guest Criminal. So that's out on the internet if you look for it. And I'll give it to you guys again. If you want to go in there and just kind of poke around, no, you can't change settings, but it gives you the ability to look at the reports and some other stuff. Um, so this environment actually is kind of complicated. You're gonna see, because we got these VMs, we got a Windows machine, we're gonna use some RDP, and all this other stuff's gotta, gotta connect. Um, and we're using the MiFi in my bag. So. If I ever get my mouse back, let's just see, we probably can hit enter. No, we can't, there it goes. So this is a script I put together and I, I'm just gonna show this to you, not because I'm like a great scripter, I'm not a developer, I'm a network engineer and data protection guy, so I know a little bit about crypto, but um, I'm trying to look, get a little deeper into um, some development. But this script, just because you don't wanna see me sit there and type and make mistakes and do it again three times before I get it right, I figured this makes sense. So when you look at the top beginning, you know, I've got some variables with some pads, but um, we're going to just really untar uh, XAMPP for Linux, right? And we're going to drop it in opt. Simple enough. Uh, so we're going to make a directory, Zeus dir, which is going to be right there under XAMPP. Uh, then I check to see if it exists, moving on. Um, then after it does all that stuff, I grab the Zeus install directory. So if you are gonna be hunting for Zeus, here's a tip. If you find one that's just like server, but without PHP and hard brackets, it's the older version. The newer version has Zeus in uh, the hard brackets, as you can see here, because they had to be ex escaped. Um, so then I move Zeus into that directory, and then I do chmod 777. Um, when I gave this talk at ThoughtCon earlier, I was the last speaker like I am today, and I had this really drunk-ass audience and the pen tester in the front row, kind of almost where you're sitting, but back 15, 20 feet. Anyone who chmod 777 doesn't know what they're doing. It's like, great, asshole, thanks. Um, <laughs> you have to chmod 777, because I said, well, let me see if I know what I'm doing. So I tried like all these other different settings, and this is the only one that works to get it installed. So if you're like, I'm gonna do 555, screw David Schwartzberg. Good luck getting Zeus to run, it ain't gonna work. You're gonna get an error somewhere. Some of it will work, some parts, but like reports to the file system won't write. So um, we do that, we start LAMP, we kick off security, we put some passwords on there, and again, if it's a demo environment or uh, like a malware aquarium that you have in a dedicated air gap network, then it's your choice. But if you have one of your coworkers that's a wise ass, they're gonna go in there and they might change passwords and stuff like that on you, and that's always annoying. 
so then we move PHP over because there was some uh, permissions issue in this version, which seemed to have gotten late, fixed in the later version of LAMP or ZAMP. And then we go to the web to finish the install. So you guys ready? Oh, crap. There we go. No. And see, I'm a lazy typist. Boom. So we got to get this right. Oh, God, it's running so slow. Uh, sometimes this thing boogies and it's done in around a minute. And I've seen it sit there for several minutes and I have a feeling we're getting the several minutes version. Sorry. Speak up, sir. I think that it's going to notify them. It's like, hey, we got another Zeus getting set up. It's that Schwartzberg guy again from Chicago, New York. He doesn't have an identity because he thinks he's a New Yorker from Chicago. Because I am. If you say, where are you from? It's New York. Where do you live? Chicago. Where am I retiring? Probably here because it's so fucking nice. <laughs> I got a text from my wife. This is me stalling. I got a text from my wife. Uh, school is closed today and tomorrow it's going to be closed too. That, um, that polar vortex is going to be negative 33 wind chill. Yeah. Hope you're enjoying the warm weather. <laughs> When I met her, she wasn't Jewish, but somehow she's learned how to dish out guilt like a pro. <laughs> wow. I think of some other jokes. So, um, who here has kids? Uh, okay. As you know, I have three, and uh, the baby now is a bit old. He's, he's two. And the other day, he walks by me, and he looks at me, and he smiles. I'm like, oh, that's so nice. He's smiling at me. And then it went from... He was dropping a deuce. <laughs> I was like, oh, you weren't smiling at me. You took a dump. <laughs> Honey? <laughs> see if I can come up with another joke. Um, oh, man, I'm a thin crust guy. I am. And I actually, I make my own pizza. Yeah, thank you. And um, so I like Giordano's because it is kind of stuffed. I can't stand Luminati's. I just can't stand it. Every time I eat it, I get the runs. <laughs> Dude, I got to stall. This really sucks. I hate it when it takes this long. And I don't know if it's... The command and control, so the, the web page that you had, the listing all the command and control, so what's, I, I don't know much about Zeus at all. Did those command and control all of the entire, all of the, the compromised uh, computers, or the only some of them report to certain CNCs, or how, how does that work? Oh, the page from uh, abuse.ch? Yes. It's a mix. It's really, there. it's either somebody, a good Samaritan reporting, hey, I found something on a compromised site while doing a pen test and it's Zeus, or they're just doing scans and they're finding the executable or they're finding like the config.bin, which is basically the plain text config file that's just kind of compressed into this sort of binary format. It's just... If you have, if I gain access to one of those CNCs, do I have access to the entirety of the Zeus network? Or? If you can break in, uh, you would. There's very few CNCs. Most of that stuff are sites serving the client executable, the config, like I said before. But I have seen some that do have the CNC, but they rename things. They rename instead of going to like C. Oh, cool. Thank you. I appreciate the miming. CP.php, which is the control panel to log in, they rename it. Or the other thing is um, they might remove the install directory because what it'll do is it'll drop after Zeus slash install. You go there. Yep, thank you. Um, he beat you to it. Did you? You didn't see the miming? Oh. Um, so that... Uh, Damn it, dude, you just derailed my train of thought. I love you. We're going to hug it out later. Um, oh, fuck. I'll get back to you. I'll get back. Yeah, it's pretty hard to find. I was actually trying to use whatever knowledge I have of Zeus to get in there, and I couldn't find their file. And I, this is, eh. I didn't know about OWASP Zap back then. Otherwise, I would have been crawling that bitch. Um, okay, before starting LAMP, modify HTTP conf, HTTP conf, and HTTP conf. Okay, so... We go into LAMP, and we go to Etsy, and there it is. And we're going to open with Notepad. Oh, 
Oh shit. Here we go again. Good thing I only need to open a notepad twice. Look at this thing. Wow. I blame Windows. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Come on back. We need you. Oh, good. At the risk of not losing any more time, I'm just going to slide it down. Okay. So I had to make sure I had the proper IP address. Oh, that ain't it. That's my encryption key. And I don't care if you know it. It's not like anything real sensitive. Uh, let's see. So we got to grab this. Edit. Copy. Minimize. Edit. Paste. Put a little colon in there. And save that one. So that's done. Then we got to go to extra and you go here. And now here's the beauty of the security model. Go all the way to the bottom. And this is that section, right? The new ZAMP security concept. Grab all this and type all. Oh, come on. You ruined the queue. There it goes. And delete, deny. That's the new security concept. Just allow it. Well, it really isn't, but just to make sure it's easy to get into and you don't have any problems. And if you want to later change that, that's fine. But for these demos that I'm just going to like revert snapshot later, who cares? So I hit save. Close it off. Get back to the script. Press enter. And that's a lot easier than me banging away at the keyboard making typos. Um, so my XAMPP pages are not secure. I don't want to secure them. And SQL has run, but I can't check the security. You want to change this password? No. All right. Uh, hit that. And I guess it's going to work. That's weird. It, what it was supposed to do is ask me for a MySQL password and a root password. And this is what happens when you test your demo before your presentation. Sometimes you forget to stop the services. So. Let's jump in here and see if this works. I lost one. Oh, I won't harass her. So let's see here. Uh, we refresh, and there it is. Good. So the page came up, but that doesn't mean you're done. So this is the control panel, and the version is 2.0.8.9. Hunt around, you might find that. And even if you find the source code, you can like make your own version if you're, you're good like that. So for admin, I'm going to put app sec cali. Oh, it remembered. Anybody want to ask me why the password's not masked? I've been asked that question. I'll answer it before you ask it, because it's malware. It really doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And there's the database. Good. So we go here, and I'll just put whatever. Dead cafe. It's got to be hex. And here, uh, enable write reports to local path. So the things you can do with Zeus is you can have it write the reports to the database and or to the flat file system in case. And it just keeps going into this text file and keeps growing. But if you want to write a script or something and parse that out and use the data for whatever you want, or, you know, automate reports to yourself, email them to yourself, something like that, you can. Let's see what happens. We hit install error. Failed to create the database. Cannot create it. And you know why? It probably already exists. You are correct, sir. So let's see if we can get in through this way. Damn you. It ain't working. Backup plan. And there's Zeus. <laughs> <laughs> Something always goes wrong. So that's my handle. I'm going to put my password in there. And log in, and there you have it. This is why we got one in the cloud, or the internet for the rest of us. So um, this is the Zeus command and control, and I'll give you a quick tour here. You guys aren't impressed? I mean, have you ever seen someone build a command and control before? I didn't, so what the hell. Um, but I have before, so trust me. So this is um, actually a pretty simple looking UI. It's very easy to figure out. It gives you just the basic information, for example, how many reports are in your database? Um, bless you. Time of your first activity, how many bots? So I'm technically not a bot herder because I have a single bot. 
If somebody has one sheep, are they still a shepherd? I don't know. That's a pet. <laughs> um, I just made that one up. That's a pretty good joke. So how many are totally active in the past 24 hours as well as your different versions? So if you do have a bot that is running an older version, you might want to upgrade it. So you might want to know. This is like SCCM, right? System Center. You guys know what that is? No, okay. Um, thank you. So, you know, uh, or Landesk. So it's good software management tool. And then even just knowing that you have X number of bots online is very helpful. You can reset your new bots or you can just say, I want the bots in default, which is just the way I build my bots. But if you were a real bot herder and you were looking to do this professionally, you can have different bots for different continents if you wanted or different <laughs> regions of the world. So you might have your South American bots, you might have your APAC bots, your NAM bots, your EMA bots. And if somebody comes to you because you're a very entrepreneurial person and says, hey, I need to do a spam campaign. I need 20,000 bots, but they need to be able to speak Spanish. Okay, great. I got 50,000 bots in South America, but I'll rent you 20,000 and you have them for X number of days. Then I would go in there or you would go in there and then create an account for that person and only give them access to 20,000 South American bots, and you would rent it off, and then when they're done, you terminate their account, unless they give you more money. Not a bad SaaS model. Um, not that I'm encouraging this, but this is what happens, this is what's going on. If you had a lot of bots, you would have a list of operating systems, and Zeus only works on Windows, so it only affect Windows machines. I try to install it on Linux, you call me up or tweet me, why isn't it working? Well, it only works on pretty much XP and Windows 7. I haven't tried it on 8, and I doubt maybe X9 or Citadel would work on 8 if they've updated the code, and probably a lot of the script commands won't work either. I have actually run um, the BackConnect server on Wine, and that worked pretty good, but if you really want to have fun and try to run a bot using Wine, it might work. But I don't think some of the commands that are intended, like for the Windows registry and stuff like that, are going to work at all. Or maybe RDP. I don't know. I don't know. I work through the wine registry, but I don't think it's more It might. Hey, if you do, then tweet it out to everybody. We'd love to hear about your research. What's the password rule for that? That guest criminal, password guest criminal. Yeah, you could use it on your mobile phone. It's a mobile app, too. <laughs> So you want a little information about your bots. I kind of got this cut off here. That's too bad. Um, should we try this? Nah, didn't work. Oh, that's too small. But it shows a little bit. I guess you guys are okay with that, right? It's not too bad. All right, good. So you have a nice little SQL picker here, and then if you have your bots in different geographies, then you can say, I just want to know about the South American bots, or I want to know about the APAC bots, or whatever. Um, to see our bot, I'm just going to set no NAT status, and if you only want to know on and offline, you can do that as well, but I only care about online right now. And I hit accept, and we wait for it, and there's the bot, which is exactly the same VM that I just fired up a little while ago. I've abused this machine so many times. Thank God for VMware. So you can get a lot more detail. So I just did a left click, and it popped up like a right click menu, which was kind of cool. Uh, so I know this won't work, but I have done it in closed environments because you don't have things like firewalls and routing in the way. And if you just give me bot information, you can literally get a screenshot of whatever that person is doing at that time. So that's not a banking feature. That is a surveillance feature. So Zeus can do surveillance on a target. So if you see that someone has a really low latency and they're online, then you can see what they're doing. And if you see that they're going online or they're checking balances or whatever, you might then want to set up the um, back connect command and then jump in there because you've already scraped their username and password. Or maybe you might be like, I'm going to drop a keylogger on this person and now I need their system password. You know, get creative. You guys can do it. Um, so you can kind of see who your next target's going to be. And again, there's like all this intel, right? You, you got your, your IP address and all that other information we looked at before. So you can even... Go and get your reports from today, the past seven days, look at files. The files would be either like cookies and certs, stuff like that, or just um, get it out of the database because you've already used that bot up and no need to continue having it in there. Thank you, sir. I've been waiting. I typically have that effect on people about this point in the presentation. Um, damn, you're good. You've been like keeping me going here. So 
these are the scripts. So this is where you create the script. So that list of scripts that we saw before when we were in Prezi, if you wanted to create a new script, you just say add new script, fill in the blanks, call it whatever you want, list the number of times you can send it or which bots are going to get it or the botnets, the countries, and then your actual command, which would be something like add bc, oh, actually it's bot bc add. But I don't need to do that. I already have that one. So we're going to go back. I'll show you a couple of them. So this is the RDP for help desk. Oh, one of the versions of this talk is using Zeus command and control for tech support, because you can. Um, so this one, you see send it, right? Yeah, <laughs> it drives me up the wall. The, uh, I think the um, uh, author of this code was Russian, because in the client, in the bot builder, your choices are English and Russian. Didn't take that much forensic skills to figure that one out. Uh, so here you go, you, you can see this is the actual command, right? I'm passing the port, yeah, um, passing the port. This is the server it's gonna connect to, so zdemo.moo.com, which is the URL I gave you guys. And then I want it to listen on port 4500. So why don't we make sure, before we try to do this, that we actually do have a server or service listening on that port. I'll show you how. Getting there. Question while we wait? Yes, sir. So one of the frustrating things about trying to eliminate those is in your environment is all the different IP addresses it goes out at. So you give a list to the network and they will typically block them. But wait a certain number of hours, assuming that desktop support doesn't eliminate them all and it'll go back on a, on a new list. So is that from a push down? Is that from a push down? Oh, that's the config.bin. We didn't get to that part of the demo, but yes. Well, it's actually, it's not necessarily a push down. It's an, um, it's an HTTP get, and there's a, a path to the bin. It reads the bin, and then it knows that I need to now move somewhere else. But if it's an HTTP get and you block that, how does it? Oh, then it's not going to get it. Then that becomes like an orphan bot. Uh, what's the password? So you gotta get them all. Well, it's tricky, right? Crap. Let me see fake desk. Yeah. Well, I think one of the best things to, to combat Zeus, because I've gotten this question a few times, what do we do to protect ourselves? Well, first, Use quality antivirus software that you know has a lab that is looking for the command and controls and blocking the IPs and anything else that might be Zeus related that's looking for that service that's running the, you know, the code for that service. Um, also, egress filtering on your firewall. So if, if Zeus is going out on port 1080 or something else and you're only allowing standard outbound ports maybe Eighty and four four three for your endpoints. I'm not talking about for your entire network, just your endpoints. Then that's going to stop Zeus. I mean, they can try to go through eighty, but then if you have a web filter and if you have a decent web filter that has AV built into it, looking for these kinds of tra traffic patterns or, um, you know, going to those command and controls, that'll stop it too. So there's a lot of things an enterprise can do. There's not much that the home user can do, and that's typically who they target. So then if you do have something like brand X internet security suite, when you have a lot of those things on there, not, not addition to, in addition to your system already getting slow from all these other services and processes running, you now have, you might be serving malware or, or spam or whatever, your system's gonna get slow, but having a client firewall is good. That does state, stateful packet inspection. I mean, you, then you gotta move what you put in the enterprise at the border down to the endpoint. Most users don't know to do, know, know to do that. They'll just install the software and leave it at defaults which is a violation of PCI DSS, those bad users, because they more than likely have some credit card information on there, which is why the Zeus criminals go after them. Kind of hit a sore spot, <laughs> or nerve. I like, no, 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 not bad, but you kind of, the emotional passion that I have behind this, which is to help people not become victims. So this is the command. Um, if you see that in the upper left-hand corner, uh, ZSBCS, this is the Zeus back connect server. This is the one I ran in Wine, and it works great. It really does. But I decided to have this machine out on the internet 
just because it's a lot more predictable than the VMs, as you can see. So what it's going to do is it's first going to get the listen command, and I'm going to tell it to use IPv4, and the BP is the um, port, so that is the back connect port on 4500 that the client's going to connect in, and then the client port is 1080. So the client goes and connects to 4500, I connect on 1080. So let's see if that works. As you can see in the history of that command prompt, it worked, for, ooh, it looks like it got already connected. Then, kind of going back to your question from earlier, sir, these, these gets, there it is. Well, it was a tail on ask, uh, access logs, so you could see that if I'm making like a change or something, I'm waiting for the bot to connect. If the logs scroll up, then we know what happened, instead of just kind of sitting here and going, when's it gonna happen? Uh, is this uh, log go to your web server back on your VM, or this is actually local log? This is it's in this lab. These, this is, um, this is not a victim machine, this is a management machine. Oh. And this machine I've SSH'd into uh, the Zeus command and control web server, okay. and all I did was TLF on access log, so that way I could see that this bot is connecting. So that's the other thing too, is there's, we didn't get into the configuration yet. We probably will run out of time because we had to wait for things and we're losing some people here already. But the, in the configs, you could tell the bot how often to connect, like once an hour, I tell them once a minute, how often to send logs, things like that. So you can see it's gonna connect periodically. We see that this, this guy's listening. So since we know all of this is working, Why don't we try and get RDP working as a victim? So typically, right, how do you get RDP working over the internet? What do you have to do if there's no VPN involved? Anyone? You can listen on the port. But if it's a machine that you have no control over, other than a little malware, how do you RDP into that machine? Over the internet, but what if 3389 is being blocked by a client firewall? You can tunnel, and that's what we're gonna do. So we're gonna tunnel, uh, let's say new connection. But now we're tunneling back to that workstation where I ran the back and X server. This lag is killing me. So here now in the RDP client, Instead of just going there on 3389, I'm actually going there on 1080, because that's the port I defined. Where this is actually kind of cool, is if we minimize this, and we bring this, oh, anybody got a license key I can borrow? <laughs> Drats, I hate when that happens. Let's see if it does it. Is it working? Connect, man, it's just so slow. Should be getting like a login prompt. So on the server, you can see where this is the public IP that it connected on. So we can see that it actually did connect. But it's just taking a long time to respond. There we go. I'm trying to reconnect. <sighs> no, no, that's always there. That always happens. So let's try something different. Minimize this guy. We just lost mouse. Oh, look at that. It's residual from before. This is disabled, so we're gonna check this off. We're gonna to go to reset, hit that, okay. Let's go back here. Let's enable it. That was just a pop up saying, sure you wanna do this? Yeah. Try it again. Well, first, wait. Oh, that went away. Wow. Somebody jump on this machine. They beat me to it. 
Uh, another piece of the demo not working so well. Does it need to wait a minute to actually pull the config? It doesn't. It's, it's just being a real pain in the ass right now. Um, let's try this. When all else fails, um, this, is, this is the bot builder. You can go on a slight tangent. That's the encryption key. If you know the encryption key and use the bot builder, you can find the bot. Let's rip it out. It's all done. Here's the builder options. This is what I was talking about before. You have English and you have Russian. That's why you see send it and things like that. So um, you pick your config file. By the way, this is the very last time I'm ever doing this presentation publicly because of these things. It's just so unpredictable. Um, now we've said, okay, we're going to um, take all that stuff that was in the config file. And if we have time, I'll go in there and show you a little bit more. But then um, you could build your config.bin. So you just hit a button, hit config.bin, you select it, hit save, yes, and we're done. Then you build the bot executable. So you see there's nothing in here. We're just going to call it bot, hit save, and should be done. Let's see if it did it. All right, there it is. Once again, we go here to information. There is the key. We hit refresh. We don't have a bot. And to show you, it does not, like UAC, like UA, this is like a default Windows 7 system. So UAC is enabled with the, the basic security settings that it has. So I can just do right click, open. I'm not clicking run as administrator. Just hitting open. Typical pop-up warning. Hey, you sure you want to run this? Sure. And you don't need to call it bot, right? If you want to like actually do this in the real world, you're not going to say, hey, this is bot.exe. You can be creative, like free beer or something. Uh -huh. like, oh, yeah, I'm going to install that. So um, once that's done, if we hit refresh, there's the bot. And what's interesting, too, is it's always going to install it in some tilde random alpha, uh, mixed case <laughs> path and then rename the executable to something else. And then it just attaches itself to a process. So it's running. And now that it was running, it's going to want to get some commands. And oh God, I should just turn this off. Um, let's see here. Let's go back to scripts. And it's enabled. And it said it took it. And it looks like it took it. See that right there? And we go here and we try again. And demo fail. It should. It should. <laughs> Thank you. That was some nerve-wracking stuff. More shit. See if I remember my password. Now, before I hit enter, I, what I think is kind of cool, because you guys know what fuss is, right? Fast user switching. Uh, where is that guy? Mother Linux. Ultimate. Okay. So once you log in with RDP, typically what happens is fuss will not let that other session continue and it'll kind of switch that user off. So if we see everything there on the, the bot, it'll start to log off, and then we'll see their desktop, so do, if it works. I do have two questions. One is, um, the password is, you know, is the password for the local machine, right? Yeah. How did you find that? Keystroke logger. Got it. Now, the second thing is, your desktop may not be uh, available service on, on professional level windows. Again, not all operating systems are created equally. So if there's a feature in there that RDP won't work, this all, then you can use VNC and you can deploy VNC, again, using that user execute command we showed you earlier. Or you can use SOX5. Change your SOX proxy and have all the traffic go back through you. And you can just collect all their info. Damn it. There's always something. Come on, load, load. You know what? I'm getting tired of this bot. I'll show you a page scrape. Oh, screw you and your cookies. Stop asking me. Well, this is annoying. All right. Oh, man. Stop it. How did... Close tab. All right. 
I'm gonna do some page scraping because that other part was RDP. We kind of got there. You saw the login prompt. I guess we had a premature exasperation because it seemed like it was working. So we'll, uh, don't leave yet. Come on, hang in there. So we got a web page. This is some crappy little web app that I, actually it's not even a web app. It's just basically a bunch of forms with some JavaScript val input validation, but it's, it's a piece of shit. So, um, but it's really on there. I changed the name. It's a real thing I put together for somebody. So you go to this website, here's the paradigm. You go to this website, you're looking for some physical security and you wanna get a code from online alarms. Not their real name, but very close. So you pick your alarm, alarm type. Uh, so maybe you want something like home automation systems. So you put in your first name. Uh, sir, what was your name again? <laughs> we are gonna name you Felix. Um, and somebody make up a last name. What was yours? Smith. Smith. Oh. <laughs> All right, we'll go with Smith. And I do this for a reason, just to show you that this is not canned information that I had in the reports in the back end, just to make it look like, oh, cool, it worked, but it didn't because it was all fake data. But no, you're making this up. Um, email address, we'll just say fsmith at... Oh, come on, take a, make something up. What's your last name? Barracuda, no, no, you actually gave me your real last name. Uh, <laughs> so I'll just say, um, we'll do it backwards, right? We'll do, uh, instead of Gmail, we will say L-I-A-M-G. Well, I, I made that up though, you guys trust me? You guys are gonna give me something else. We'll just say it's for business. We'll just put whatever in. Make it pick. EDU. Okay, he said to make it EDU. EDU. Um, make a name up, sorry? Boxing company. Boxing. Good. Boxing Co. All right. Um, a username. We'll just stick with F. Smith because it's simple. Uh, what should his password be? Absolutely. Please. Password one. All right. Thanks for playing along at home. Password one. We're going to confirm it. And we scroll down a little bit and we say um, register because now I'm trying to get a quote. So we hit register. And of course, we get an error. Load balancer. No, 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 that was not intended. Let's try it again. There we go, that's the page we're supposed to get. Um, yeah, the load balancer defaults. It's, I don't know why it's pointing to the other side. It's not, I, I, whatever. So we have this page and now we've shopped around, we've gathered some information, we know what we wanna buy and we're gonna go buy something. Um, this is the HTTP web inject that I talked about before. This page originally does not have a uh, request for the CVV code. So if you were to go to this web page right now, www.onlinealarms.com forward slash OAQ slash register.html, there is no CVV for you because you're not infected. If you don't believe me, let's see, let's see if this works. Probably won't because nothing else did. Um, this is Linux. I'm going to get the silly uh, Jurassic Park thing again. Jesus, it's slow. Let's try another machine. Yeah, that's what I'm doing now. Oh, well. <laughs> what did he say? <laughs> what? Is this one of your auto completes or is that just saying? <laughs> oh, really? I didn't catch it. <laughs> Why is it doing this? Five minutes. This is not what it's supposed to do. Things are just blowing up left and right, man. So that's, this is horrible. So let's just go and um, I'm just gonna strike the keyboard like this. Uh, pick a month. May. July. Ladies first. Pick a year. All right, we'll just do 25. Um, CVV, we'll just <coughs> kind of hit the keyboard. Billing information, uh, what is the address here? 14. Uh, PCH. Oh, I'll we'll just do PCH, thank you. And we'll just leave it at that. Um, we'll do, let's switch it. Pick another city, because I don't want you to think this is Canada. Culver City. Culver? I'm wondering if this is even going to work. Pick a state other than California. Colorado. Give me a zip code. Okay. Let's see if it works. 
All right. Now let's go back to Zeus, and I have a bad feeling about this. So now that we see that you can like issue some commands to Zeus, and you can get your bot installed, I showed you the bot builder, you can go to the database. Here's data from only today. Well, maybe we'll include the 27th. I don't know why it says the 28th. So, all right. So here it is from here. So you can see we logged in with Facebook before. And when we logged in with Facebook, this is the username and the password was Barracuda123. But we also changed the password because we did a, you can see it's a post, right? Post data, Barracuda321. So even if somebody's infected and they change their password, you could still get it. So that was a page script that worked earlier. Thank goodness for old data. <coughs> Um, we even see right here, right? Register. Let's see if this one works. Oh, there it is. Felix Smith. Yay, it kind of worked. Yeah. Here, uh, let's hit search database again. See if we get the credit card info. Check out HTML. There's the credit card information. There's the CVV number. There it is, PCH. So even though for whatever reason on the base OS, the DNS FQDN wasn't working, but it is working on the bot, we are scraping pages. Someone raise their hand. I was wondering on the previous page, it's that HTTPS email, everything you're doing is straight HTTP right there. This page? The Facebook? No, the clip out right there, it's HTTPS. Yeah. Yeah, it's just some bug that's in there. I didn't write the code, dude. Um, but here, there it is straight up HTTPS. So somebody might be like, if it's encrypted, then how did you get it? This is happening before the encryption happens. It's not a proxy. It's basically a shim. It's just shoved in the middle of the user session. And then as the data goes out, it hits Zeus. Zeus scrapes it. And then the rest of it goes to Facebook or wherever. Are you sure it's parallel? <laughs> I think it's in between. I think it goes like that. So the last thing we're going to do is I think you guys got a, a sense of what Zeus does, right? I think this is the funnest part. Oh, he's going to miss the best part. So we've violated our bot. We've, I got one minute left. Eh, that's probably all this is going to take. We go to our script. You know, we're the bad guys. We did all the dirty work. We want to go to this script that's called when all else fails. It's disabled on purpose. Um, so the first thing we want to do is reset it. I called it that. But what it really is doing is issuing this user destroy command. It doesn't take much imagination to know what that's going to do. So you go to enable, and you turn it on, and it's enabled. And you sit here and wait. And you look, keep your eye down here, because the next time it does uh, a request. Yeah, screw you. You broke my heart. <laughs> We're going to do, it's going to do a get to the Zeus control panel, and then it's going to get the command to uh, do user destroy. Got to wait for it to do it. Okay. And cross your fingers. It takes about a minute or so. Be time. Oh, it's closing the session. It's logging us out. It just looked like it logged us out, but let's see if we can get back in. But you can't trust me. I have malware. Mm -hmm. I'm a bad guy. So it's logged us off, and now we're on this VM, and it's essentially just kind of sitting. What is it doing? It's supposed to be just sitting there. Come on, bring back the login prompt. I can't wait to start drinking. <laughs> I was going to bring my flask, and I'm like, you know, I just don't want to be all that kind of pretentious flasky kind of guy. So I left it home, and then I was like, damn TSA, they would have confiscated that stuff and drank all the bourbon that was in there. <laughs> I'm waiting for the login prompt to come back. It'll show uh, my username and I think another username, and here it goes. Almost there. Thanks for hanging in. Yeah, it's almost there. So it's just like, please wait, please wait. I mean, how many 
years in your life do you think you've waited for Microsoft software to finish doing what it's supposed to do? Somebody did an analysis and said like an IT person that had like, I think it was like 20, 25 years on the job, spent five of it waiting for Windows. Okay, good, we got a login prompt. So now I'm gonna log in, I'm gonna put in my password. And how do I know the password, sir? Because I built the VM. Um, but if I wanted to attack somebody, you know, you're so much smarter now when I first met you. Oh, you are. All right, so instead of logging in and giving me the normal desktop, it's saying you need to activate Windows, which is what Zeus is intending to do. It's setting it up so that even you're like, whoa, what happened to my activation? We knew it wasn't working before, but even if it was legit, it would say this. And you're like, well, screw this. I'm going to do that later. And now it's like, okay, fine. It's not genuine. And I'm going to go to my desktop. God, this is usually so much faster when it's not in front of people. What's that? Performance anxiety. It has performance anxiety. And then once you logged in, you're like, oh, cool. So let me go to my banking site or let me go do my taxes because it's almost that time of year again. It's just going to kick us off. So I don't know if you want to go now and kind of ruin the uh, spoiler. There you go. It just kicks us off. So you can't get back in. So then you're going to call Felix and be like, Felix, something's wrong with my computer. Can you help me? I can't play Yahoo games. Um, but that's what's going to happen is, is your, your friends or your family, they're going to get infected. And when that happens, uh, when that, that user uh, execute or user destroy command is um, executed, they're going to be like, why does Windows not work? And you're going to sit there and be like, I don't know. I can't log in. I can't log in. And that is the behavior that is expected. So hopefully you're all a little smarter now. I do appreciate your time and attention. Sorry that some of the demo failed, which is expected because, again, like I said in the beginning, it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when and what. And, but we got some of the good parts working. You can always go again back to zdemo.moo.com. Guest criminal is the username. Password guest criminal. Thank you. You guys have been awesome, especially Felix. And uh, enjoy the rest of the day.